My name is Greg Peltzer, and I'm an Associate Professor of Political Studies at the University of Saskatchewan, and I'm the Founding Director of the International Center for Northern Governance and Development. Currently, I'm the Executive Chair of that center. Circumpolar North consists of the northern regions of the so-called eight Arctic states. Those eight Arctic states include Iceland, Denmark because of Greenland, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Russia, the United States because of Alaska, and Canada. Now there's a lot of discussion about what really constitutes the North in the Circumpolar North. And it comes uh, clear in a country like Iceland, all of it counts as part of a, the Circumpolar North. When you look at places like uh, Norway and Sweden and Finland, they count their northern counties as part of their circumpolar north. In countries like uh, the United States, it's all of Alaska. But in Canada, there's a bit of a debate, and same as in Russia, of which areas of those two countries really count as part of the circumpolar north. In the case of Canada, some people would just include the three territories of the Yukon, Northwest Territories and Nunavut, and perhaps also Northern Quebec and Labrador. But there's also a strong case that the Provincial Norths also belong to the Circumpolar North community, the Northern Alberta, Northern BC, Saskatchewan, Northern Ontario, and uh, large parts of Northern Quebec. And the reason being, of course, is in terms of climate, in terms of people, economies, there's very little difference, really, between the Provincial Norse and the Territorial Norse in Canada. The same thing is in Russia. There are some areas that are distinctly part of the Arctic and subarctic region, but they too have districts that are very similar to our Provincial Norse in terms of the economy, Indigenous peoples, and the, some of the social and political challenges, as well as the natural environment, that clearly mean they should really be considered part of the Circumpolar North. One of the most uh, fascinating things about the Circumpolar North is what they share in common, and, but as well as some of the important differences. Uh, one of the things that's shared in common among all the Arctic states, with the exception of Iceland, which doesn't have Indigenous peoples, is that there is a strong, vibrant uh, Indigenous economy, which is still closely tied to the land. In countries like uh, Norway and Sweden, Sami, the indigenous peoples of northern Scandinavia and northwest Russia, still are actively engaged in activities such as reindeer herding and fisheries, as well as hunting and gathering activities. The same thing is in uh, northern Russia, where there's extensive reindeer herding, as well as hunting, fishing, and other uh, traditional activities. In northern Canada and in Alaska, traditional pursuits are still very important part of the local economy and in fact in some communities country foods make up the largest proportion of uh, community members diets. But the northern economies are not just traditional economies. They also have a very a large state sector. In fact the in northern regions of the United States and Canada in northern Scandinavia the state sector is often the largest sector in the region or in the local area. So public sector is very, very important, as well as transfers to uh, individuals in terms of income supports and so on. And finally, the private sector plays a very important role in northern economies and is becoming increasingly important. And there's ma major facets to the, the private sector economy. Most uh, people are quite familiar with the fact that the north, the arctic, and the subarctic areas of the circumpolar north region is a treasure trove of natural resources. In the Arctic Ocean Basin alone, uh, scientists estimate that 25 percent of the world's remaining unexplored petroleum resources lie there. Gold, coal, uh, oil and gas on land, as well as other uh, resources such as potash and uh, uranium are also found in large quantities in the Circumpolar North region. Other areas, uh, renewable resources, from everything from fisheries 
to uh, timber and lumber resources, the forestry sector, um, as well as hydroelectric uh, development are also key economic drivers in the circumpolar north. So many people are quite familiar with the traditional economies, the resource-based economy, but what's surprising is a lot of people are not familiar with the thriving and uh, burgeoning uh, knowledge economy sector. In places like Sheleftio in northern Sweden, there's a very uh, vibrant IT sector. Uh, in Luleå, also in Sweden, there's a very active uh, sector uh, in IT. And uh, Facebook, for example, is lo has located all their uh, servers for, for Europe in, in northern Sweden. New, in new industries, uh, particularly in uh, bioprospecting of Arctic resources in Norway, is yet another example. And the new uh, emerging uh, tourism, particularly ecotourism, is becoming increasingly important in a number of northern communities.